Sparking Zero has been out roughly two weeks at the time of this recording. Now I have roughly 100 hours on the game, and in today's video I will be going over my experiences since early release, as well as going over some of the controversy and where I see the game going in the future. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more, and the one question I want you to have on your mind is if you could change one thing about the game, what would it be? Let me know in the comments down below. To start things off, I'm going to address the elephant in the room. Uh, the balance amongst characters and abilities now i do want to say i feel as though this balance concept should be more in rank mode um right because in rank mode competitive advantages if there are to be any need to be slim to none um in casual mode of course you know gogeta can have more base damage or more or max health bars or whatever and krillin could have significantly less in all categories However, when it comes to the competitive game mode, regardless of if people want to consider it competitive or not, things need to be more leveled out and equal. Now, when I say balance, I'm referring to things like Pan having after image strike. Because like in, in what world, in what universe, in what GT episode did Pan ever use after image strike? Like I don't, that isn't, that's not resonating. And ironically enough, at the time of this recording, um Yajirobe got nerfed pretty pretty good might I add but I will still say that the fact they added him in the game with as much health as they did with Sensu being costing five skill points not six um as well as him starting off with two for some reason like that was extremely weird regardless I did want to bring that up however they did nerf him today so you know I, that that is what it is uh, not only do some of these abilities for certain characters just not make sense, but I feel like they're stronger than they are even in the anime. And and again, I'm going to go back to after image strike here, but like genuinely, when did Pan do that shit? When did she do, and when did where they do it for 15 seconds? If anything was happening for 15 seconds, it was vanishing battles. I will say that it, it's weird that they made sense in that since who being heals more than sleep. Like, yes, that should technically work like that. But why are we only making sense there? Now, I do want to say, I don't think these abilities need to get, like, removed from the game or anything crazy like that. But I do think that they need, like, reduced times or reduced effects. For instance, if after Image Strike, you know, is going to be as strong as it is or whatever and be with who it is. Instead of 15 seconds, maybe try 8. Maybe try 10. Like, let's try to, you know, lower it down a little bit. Because it's just weird to me that we have after Image, right? And if I remember reading it correctly, it said it lasts for one attack. Who would do that? when you could have a character that has after image strike and you could do that for 15 seconds like i don't i don't get why they added the one when there's a, a bigger better option uh, available in the roster i also want to bring up the um insta spark moves um i know there's several and they're all named different things but the ability where you use skill points and you can instantly go into sparky mode now while i understand why it's in the game especially in like high rank play where you're not gonna have time to really charge up your key like that uh, it, it does feel a little shitty to get used on you. Um, I'm all for, like, turning matches and then, you know, big comebacks and stuff like that. But me personally, like, I, I, I like to, you know, I, I play Super Broly, right? I'll start off in base form and I'll work my way up as the fight's needed in true anime fashion. But I don't ever use his unless I'm playing against certain characters who are using certain things, i.e. Super Vegito using um, After Image Strike, like... In those situations, I'll, you know, use it then just because cheese against cheese. But but it feels really bad to, like, be doing all this work and whooping such and such ass. And then I don't know where they go sparky mode. And then, boom, it just 180s completely flips on you. And then you're in a way helpless to all the fuckery that is sparky mode. So, I don't know. that that It's a big, it's the name of the game. It's a big game mechanic. So, obviously, they can't just take it out. But, I don't know, maybe some, some tweaks to sparky mode or something because it's, it's, over it's it's a lot it's overbearing at times <laughs> lastly and maybe this is just like a me thing uh, lastly for this category but why the fuck does raccoon have what five health bar like why does raccoon have so much health and i'm thinking maybe it's based on the category in which your character is in but then i look at raccoon right obviously strength and then i look at say gogeta or any of the fusions or whatever beerus they're not in the strength category. There's no there's no way they're in the strength category, so it can't be that. So why does Raccoon have so much health? And also, I've noticed that when I'm picking Super Broly, when I'm in like the pregame lobby, when I'm like matching, uh, waiting for uh, an opponent, and I'm fighting the computer, I'll have certain amounts of health bars, 
But then when the match starts, I'll have three health bars or whatever the hell. So maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it's a setting or something. But like, because if someone could explain that to me, that'd be awesome. But back to Raccoon, Raccoon, why does he have so much health? I feel like it should make sense with the anime. Like, Raccoon was introduced early Namek, uh, early Namek Saga. He got beat by fucking um, Goku, who at the time knew what Kaioken uh nothing past that so i'm thinking like why why does he have more health than even a super saiyan goku or super saiyan vegeta right i feel like the health bar should be based on your dp point and that should be based on what abilities you have and the strength of those abilities see that could be something that is easily balanceable they could just you know tweak that as as that goes but i don't know it's just really weird to me that he has and and on top of that if you're doing dp battles you can have the entire ginyu force and just him alone is is a lot, especially with his ultimate and stuff. But more so, I'm focusing on his health bar. That it's just a lot. I don't know. It's kind of it's weird to me. It's weird to me. All right. Next up, we're gonna talk about a uh, player progression. Um, yeah, I reached level twenty fairly quickly, and to the best of my knowledge, unlocked everything that it you know came to came to offer. Um, the problem I'm having is I didn't really notice. <laughs> Now, now, don't get me wrong, I know where to look when you unlock something, but honestly, for the longest time, I didn't even know 20 was the max level. I just noticed that my thing wasn't going up at all. So, I feel like it was kind of, it feels a little weird that you reach the max level and there's no, maybe there was a trophy. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't notice anything. But yeah, I don't, it didn't feel like a big achievement. Uh, personally, I would like to see it go past 20 maybe 50 maybe 100 you know like i don't know maybe some prestige or something in there too but i think reaching max level at 20 kind of puts a damper on wanting to progress the game further just a little bit it kind of would have been nice to get some more player cards or titles or something but i mean it is what it is but uh yeah that was just something i thought was a little weird also this brings up character progression um there's no way of talking about this without bringing up, bringing up cosmetics, which isn't something really that I care about per se, but it kind of does. They kind of go toe to toe. I think that while I don't necessarily care about them, there are a lack of cosmetics, at least for other characters other than Goku and Vegeta. I think par par character progression was the perfect way of honestly introducing it. I think there's what, like six or seven, maybe eight uh, stars that you can that you can unlock for your character. Now, maybe it already correlates. Again, I can't fucking notice. Like, the stars go up. I say, cool, I queue another match. Like, I, maybe I unlocked everything or bought everything as soon as I had unlocked them. Thus, I don't notice that I'm getting... Like, that right there, right? In the story mode. I see that. I get that. But, cool, whatever. So, I mean, <laughs> like, I buy them. I unlock them, or I unlock them, I buy them, and I kind of just move on, but it, do, it doesn't feel like there was a lot to unlock, I guess, so maybe that's why I haven't really noticed. I also think player titles get unlocked through this, but I, again, I really I really can't tell. Maybe I, I, maybe I just need to pay more attention, honestly. I don't, I don't really know. Following player progression and character progression, I'm, we're going to step into the lines then. We're going to step into the lines then on this one. I need to talk about episode battles and the fuckery that was these episode battles. Majority of these battles were shit. I'm going to just be honest, majority of them. Uh, Gohan, Piccolo, and Goku, obviously they were nice. Gohan and Piccolo's carried. I don't know what the fuck they were cooking up with that shit, but that that was that was five-star meal. That was that was good. Goku's was basic. Everyone knows Goku's. It is what it is. But the Gohan, spoiler alert, the Gohan Black arc, that was really cool to see. Piccolo being able to take care of Frieza and take care of Cell and train with Gohan like that that stuff was also really cool to see it would have been nice to see a lot more of those types of branches my biggest issue was Vegeta's they ended Vegeta's a whole show short a whole entire sh and he arguably was one of he was he was like one of the most important people in super and they didn't give him any super battles he was such a huge role in Super, and they did not give him a single fight. And they ended it at, after the Boo Saga. Like, what? And again, don't get me wrong, you know, like on the screen now, the fight with Trunks in the, in the, in the hyperbolic time chamber, that was really cool to see. Being able to fight Majin, uh, Babidi's spell and all that, that was also fun. But it ends there. Like, everything else was just stupid. Like, 
it, it ends there. Moving on from Vegeta's, like, they, they gave Goku Black a story, which is, like, whatever, cool, but they didn't even give us his story. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm bored of the story, but I'm bored of Goku's story, right? If we're going to give us someone as interesting as Goku Black, who takes Goku's body, kills everybody or whatever, let us see that. I want, I want to kill everybody. Let me have a, fu- let me have a fight with Goten. Even though he didn't really fight back, but let me have a fight with Goten and let me let me I want to experience the steps in which led to him being him, and then we can go on to his boring ass story after. But like, let me experience those moments. Moving on from him, I truly I cannot understand why they gave Frieza tournament of power fights, but not Vegeta. And I just at at some point it feels rushed, undercooked, underbaked. Like, maybe they ran out of time or they ran out of something and just couldn't add more. Because it's just, I cannot wrap my head around. Maybe it's going to be DLC later. I, but I just cannot wrap my head around the fact that Vegeta, the number two man, who took out Tapo, might I add, didn't get any time in the Tournament of Power. I, I, I don't know. I had to look it up. I just had to look it up because I knew I was fucking forgetting somebody. And no, not Future Trunks. I hate him as a character. At least in Super, I just, I just, I, he's, no, fuck him. Jiren, they gave, who the, who asked for Jiren? Genuinely, who the fuck asked for Jiren? Like, I don't know, it didn't even like three fucking, who asked for Jiren? I'm I'm about to get pissed, but I want to know, they could have cut Jiren's segment out and backed in that on, on Vegeta's pause and, um, put all that time and energy and effort resources into extending his story but they gave it to jiren nobody wanted that they didn't even go as far as to show us again anything before the tournament of power when it comes to jiren nothing about him getting his strength nothing about losing his master nothing about joining the um his stupid ass superhero looking team like they didn't give us any backstory and they just dropped him in the tournament of power and said guys go crazy like that was extremely stupid did he did he have any branches either I, I think I played through his thing and just to finish it and left it alone. Lastly, um, with this episode battle shit, I, I just want to say, like, again, I thought I would see way more Goku Black type arcs, like some some deeper what if scenarios, more so with Frieza and Vegeta, just because, you know, Frieza being the bad guy, a lot could happen if Frieza had won in certain aspects or did this or, or that in certain aspects. For instance, when he comes back to Earth and fights trunks as mecha frieza i made a uh, custom battle just kind of doing the inverse of that if frieza were to have won what would that look like so if you want to go check that out i'll link or not leak but i'll post the code in the comments if anybody wants but i thought there would be more of that um it would be shorter branches you know he would beat such and such and then he had to beat such and such and then he would blow up the world or something like that but it still would have been cool to see that and, and see that dialogue and then like again vegeta like there are so many aspects of Vegeta's story that he could have been bad for longer. He could have got Super Saiyan first. He could have got Super Saiyan God and fought Beerus. Like, there's just so many aspects of his story that I feel like they missed out on showing us. And granted, I mean, luckily, you know, we can all make them in the, in the custom battles mode, uh, custom battles mode. It still just would have been nice to kind of see like the animation and the in the in the in the in the, in the dialogue amongst the characters. Next up, slight complaint, nothing too crazy, uh, and I hope they don't use it for a cash grab. I'm not even really sure how that would work, but I'm going to be addressing the map pools. Now, don't get me wrong, the maps we have now are beautiful. They're amazing. They look really, really good, really, really vibrant and alive. But I do. There, there's obviously some missing. For instance, uh, the underworld, Kami House. King Kai's planet, uh, Snake Way. I'm not really sure how that would work. The fucking lookout. Like, I don't know how you don't add the lookout. Like, they added the hyperbolic time chamber, but didn't give us the lookout. I don't know. Kind of weird, not going to lie. But if their grand scheme here is to add it as add those, those as DLC content, a little weird. Because then in that regard, like, what happens if you play against somebody who doesn't have it? Do you guys just not play on the map? I think that's a little weird. That's a little slimy. But again, maybe that won't be a cash grab. We'll have to wait and see. I just like in the grand scheme of things, I don't really see how these maps got left out unless this game was rushed, which the more I talk about this and the more I look at things, the more it kind of seems like the game was rushed. All right. Finally, last, 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 last thing that really bothers me and kind of makes me not want to boot up the game. Um, there are so many 
fucking counters in this game. So many counters. And at least half of them are so fucking free to pull off. Look, I'm not, I'm not in, I'm not, I'm horrible with names. I'm not in the game that deep to remember the names like that. I think it's called Perception. For me, I play PlayStation. It's the circle button. It's the one where your character strikes a fucking pose. And, um, they instantly, you know, do a hit that leaves your opponent stunned. But it has no business being free. That is, like, the counter of the game to me. Like, that is the the counter and for it to be completely free because at that point what happens is you, it just turns into a fucking perception battle and you guys go back and forth perception perceptioning and hitting and then you know that can lead into sonic sway which again is another counter in my opinion but these are free and i just don't get why i don't get why they don't cost like a little more key or i don't i don't really know what it could cost but fundamentally i think they're they're just weird right and then the other ones that we have the Z counters and I think super counters, right? It's like R1 in a flick of the stick or something. You got to time it just right. Like I can't do those on purpose, right? The people who can GG's don't even it's over. If, if you can do that shit on demand, you, you win, you can take my game. You can take my controllers. You can take my house. I'm good. I'm not playing you because you're fucked. If you're playing against somebody who knows how to do that on command, I'm, I'm going to be honest. But going back to the perception one specifically, like it's low risk, high reward. And I don't like that in games gen gen generally. So I feel like it needs to cost at least something, some form of key. Maybe if like, I don't know, maybe I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if you fail or something, maybe if you succeed, you gain. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't tell you. But it, I think fundamentally, though, it does need some work, some changes, some something, some balance. I don't know. I forgot there's also um what is it revenge counters so all, all together like counting sonic so there's like four or five counters in this game and that's a lot that's a lot for a fighting game that's a lot for a game like this and that's a lot for a game where you can insta go in a sparky mode or be invulnerable to most attacks for 15 seconds or like a whole i don't know it's just there's a lot to this game and i like it in that regard because there's a lot of ways battles can turn out but at the same time you know more isn't necessarily better and at a certain point it does get a little much it does get a little much that's all i have for you today if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more sparking zero content be sure to answer that one question if there was one thing you could change about the game what would it be let me know in the comments down below thank you guys again and i'll see you in the next video